Okay, you guys, starting with the second part of 5.2, one of the things that when you guys are asked to factor stuff is that try and always look and see if there's a term in common first. There's a two that could be divided into both, all, sorry, not both, all three of these. So you're going to factor the two out. And factoring means you're going to pull something out. Now, you can pretend that you're dividing to help you see what's inside, but you're not dividing. You're factoring. That's just a trick you can use to help you see that you get an x squared, a minus 5x, and a plus 6. Because if you distributed that 2 back inside, you should get what you started with. Now, factoring this the rest of the way should be easier. Leading coefficient is 1, so now that's an x and an x. What well, multiplies to 6, adds to negative 5, would be minus 2, minus 3. That's going to be easier to do it that way than leaving the 2 in place and trying to factor it when the leading coefficient isn't 1. Here, there's only a 3 that's in common with all of them, not the 6. The 3 is the only thing in common. And to help you see what to multiply, or sorry, what's left, is you can pretend to divide by 3. So then you get 2x squared plus 7x minus 9. And to factor that, the 3 is going to sit there. To get the 2x squared, you know you're going to need an x, or sorry, a 2x and an x. To get the minus 9, well, most likely it could be 1 and 9 or 3 and 3. Um, this is a case where actually 1 and 9 is going to work. And I can, you know, I said normally that doesn't, and that's still true. Normally it's not going to. Now if I put the 1 here and the 9 here, and I multiply the outside for FOIL, the F-O-I, the O, I would get 18. That's way too far away from 7. So I bet you it goes 9 and 1. They're multiplying to negative 45, and this goes, ne sorry, negative 9, adding to 7. So I bet you that, let's see, this is going to be plus, and this is going to be minus. So when I do the outside, I have a minus 2x, and the inside is a positive 9x. So then I get a 7x for the middle, which is needed. Okay? If you're having trouble seeing that, just play around with these numbers by putting them in and seeing which one's going to generate the 7x for the middle. Okay, we did these, uh, the first part the other day. Notice that um, now we have a zero on it, that it equals zero, whereas the other day this wasn't here, and all you were doing was factoring it. So just if this equaling zero initially bugs you, all right, just factor it. So the leading coefficient is 1. So we can just go x and x. Multiply to negative 10. So 1 and, forget about the negative, 1 and 10, 2 and 5. And they're adding the 3. So it's going to be 2 and 5, not the 1 and 10. Now they're adding the 3. So this would be positive, this would be negative. Now this is equal to 0. And what the zero product property says is that if you got something times something and it equals zero, one of those, at least one of them, has to be worth zero. And what you end up doing is you end up setting both of them equal to zero and solving for the variable. So here you have this product. You're multiplying these together and it equals zero. What's gonna, what numbers make it zero? Well, set both pieces equal to zero and solve. That's the zero product, because it's a product and it equals zero. Add the two, subtract the five, so your answers are two and negative five. Those are the numbers that make this thing equal to zero. So you factor it and put the factors equal to zero. So what you got the other day, I guess it would be yesterday, is you got x and x, seven and three, and 7 is minus, 3 is plus, so that you get minus 7x plus 3x, so minus 4x. Now set those equal to 0. Minus 7 equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0. So x equals 7 and negative 3. 
those are your two answers. All right? I think you guys can get the, the ones where the leading coefficients are one. Why don't I go down and do the ones that are getting more harder because the leading coefficient isn't one. We know we're going to need a 2x and an x. The multiplying to 15, my guess is it's 3 and 5. So I'm going to put the 5 and 3. Um, they're multiplying to negative, so one's a plus, one's a minus. We need to check the outside, minus 10x. Inside, 3x. They're getting a negative 7x. I need a positive 7x. So that means I made a sign error. So now it's right. Now set these equal to 0. 2x minus 3 equals 0. Add the 3. Divide by 2. So 3 halves. This one, x plus 5 equals 0. x is equal to negative 5. So negative 3, or sorry, positive 3 halves and negative 5 are your two answers. This one's going to work real similar. 3x, x. Uh, 20, so 4 and 5, was that the 4 and 5? So 7. So I'll go 5 and 4, see if that works. Negative 20 minus plus minus 12x plus 5x. That gives you negative 7x. I want a positive 7x. So again, I made a sign error. Now you set these things equal to 0. Add the 5, divide by 3. Subtract the 4 to the other side. Once you set it equal to 0, negative 4. Okay? Doing the ones where you had stuff in common, pull out the 2 first. 2. So you have x squared. Oh, wait. This one you can actually divide because it's set equal to 0. You can actually divide each of these things only because it's equal to 0. If it was equal to some other number or not equal, then you can't do it. So you got x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. That's a lot easier to solve. Now this one, you're only going to divide out what's in common. You're not going to divide everything by 6. You're only going to divide by what's in common. So then you have, whoops, 2x squared plus 7x minus 9 equals 0, and you factor it and set the factors equal to 0. One like this, you need to get everybody on the same side. So how about I subtract the 4p squared to that side, minus 4p squared. So then I have p squared minus 25 equals 24. I would add the 25 over, and you get p squared then is equal to 49. And you guys, from here, you could square root both sides. And you get p equals plus or minus, oops, 7. I'm showing you to do it a different way. Right at this point, p squared equals 49. Subtract the 49 off. And this is what they're actually intending you to do, is that that's a difference of square pattern. So that's p and 7, p and 7, one's a plus, one's a minus. Now you set each of these equal to zero. That's what they really are asking me on, but implying that, hey, do the zero product properties. So there you go. Whoops, no x. p is equal to negative 7, p is equal to positive 7. So there's the plus and minus 7. We haven't really talked about doing it much this way. This is really what they're after, making sure you guys haven't forgotten about that difference of square pattern. Okay? That's the difference of square pattern. Um, here they're looking for you to rewrite stuff given in standard form into intercept form. And remember, standard form was y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Intercept form was a x minus p, x minus q. Well, all they're doing, guys, is just saying factor it. Factor it. Okay, so to rewrite it, y is equal to uh, plus 5 minus 2. Now give the intercepts. Negative 5, positive 2. And they're not coordinates. You don't write parentheses around them. Those are the intercepts. So, rewriting this one in intercept form. 
They're just factoring it. So x, x, negative 21, negative 4. So how about minus 7 plus 3? So the x-intercepts, read them both opposite, negative 3. Because the intercepts here would P and Q. We did this back in section 5, 1. Okay. This one, there's a 2 in common. Factor the 2 out. That's a lot easier to see. This would become Y is equal to 2. So then that's X minus 3, X minus 2. So your intercepts are 2 and 3. And they come from these numbers, not this one out here. All right? When you have just a negative hanging out front, factor that negative out, negative 1. If you need to, help yourself see that you're pretending to divide a negative 1. It's still there. x squared plus 7x plus 12. And then you're going to factor that. Minus 1, x plus 3, x plus 4. And your um, x-intercepts then would be negative 3, negative 4. Okay, so that should take care of what you guys need to do for this one.